Hello friends. This is my lavender oat milk latte. <laughs> Hi, welcome back to my channel. It is me, your local chaotic witch on. And today we are doing 10 tips for witches who are not ready to be out and open with their practice. I guess the more commonly used term is broom closet. I don't know how I feel about the term as a queer person. So I'm just gonna leave it over there. And we're just gonna say if you're not ready to be out and open about your practice or you can't be open about your practice, either way, 10 tips from me to you. Uh, number one, stay safe. This is a big old disclaimer, big old fat piece of advice from your aunt E for me. Do not endanger yourself to practice witchcraft. There is a difference between saying, I'm not ready to be out and open with my practice, but I'm not gonna be kicked out of my house for it, and actually possibly endangering yourself, possibly being kicked out, possibly exposing yourself to really traumatic experiences for practicing witchcraft. It is really, really important to note that you have all the time in the world to be a witch and to study and there are ways for you to be a witch without doing spells or physical things that really could cause trouble. And I say this as someone who has seen, you know, online so many amazing witches who were exposed to like exorcisms when they were younger or really traumatic experiences within the church because they had an interest in witchcraft and your safety comes first do not endanger yourself to practice. And that's my first tip. First fat piece of advice, also a big old disclaimer, do not do it because once you're 18, once you move out, you have the rest of your life to be a witch. You have the rest of your life to study and form a practice. Do not do it when it could actively harm you and put you in a dangerous situation. This video in itself is mostly for those who just aren't ready to be open about it, who maybe if they were open, their parents wouldn't like it, it would cause some tension, but it wouldn't endanger them. Please, 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 I'm putting so much emphasis on this. Do not practice witchcraft if it could harm you and your livelihood and put you possibly in a situation where it's really bad. So this video is, uh, is geared towards more situations in which maybe like tension with the family, the family wouldn't approve, the parents wouldn't like it and don't want it in the house. But if you do do it in the house, the worst you'll get is like a grounding. If you don't want to be grounded, don't do it. I, <laughs> I'm a really, I'm an awful role model. Mm. Um, but anyways, these are ways for you to be a witch and to kind of quote unquote practice or start researching witchcraft without having a bunch of witchy stuff in your space, especially if you're in a family who's like, you can study it, but don't put, don't set up an altar. You do not need an altar. If you really want an altar, your first altar can look like a piece of shit. It does not <laughs> have to look super witchy and have a bunch of materials on it. You don't need an altar. If you really want an altar, there are ways for you to make it look not super witchy. My first altar was like really weird looking. I'm just gonna go through what was on it. We got, what is this, three? four spell, spell bottles, some books, all by Scott Cunningham, <laughs> uh, some tea light candles, a knife, some incense, uh, lots of crystals. It looks like I went a little down from like the first picture I had of it. That is a bowl of rice, a Fleetwood Mac CD. Looks like moon water, storm water, and cursing water. I think I dumped some of that cursing water on a curse that then backfired. Woo! A lot of nuts. That's like three acorns and a walnut. A railroad spike that I just found and then got rid of because I didn't, I, why would I do that? I don't know. Three candles. Um, I think these are supposed to be deity candles, but I don't think I actually, I'm not working with any of them anymore and I don't even know if I was working with them in the first place. But the candles, hypothetically, were for Anne Morgan, Cronanos, and Bastet. We got a little dragon cactus and a bowl. It looks like this bowl and this other bowl full of rice <laughs> were used for spells. Let me see. Yeah, this rice bowl was definitely used for spells because there's a whole lot of wax in it and a lot of leaves and some rocks. 
That was my first altar. My second altar was literally some plants, a charging brick, <laughs> cactus, an oracle deck. This was in college, I couldn't have any candles. Uh, <laughs> altars are not as important as they would seem. All right, um, altars I believe is a concept were not originally in witchcraft. Um, sacred spaces were, but altars in themselves are more of a concept, like a later rebirth of witchcraft via Wicca concept. I believe in some traditions, altars were very stereotypical. A folk magic doesn't usually use them. My altars were something that I just kind of kept. Just kind of kept it. If you really want a hidden altar, hidden altar, and you have that kind of capability, you can A, make your desk into an altar without putting anything witchy on it. You can draw a sigil on the desk, take some tap water, literally use tap water, add some herbs, bless it, draw a sigil that creates it as a sacred space, and yeah, then do your workings on that or do your meditating, your shadow work, your research on that altar. If you can have a little bit more of like an altar, white candle, whatever you feel pulled to, go find a rock that's outside, bring it inside. I shared, I have a rock here that I got from outside. Hold on, there we go. It's a banded eye gate, I believe. I found this on the trail behind my house. This is something that I connect with versus, you know, a crystal rocks, um, sticks, leaves, things that are important to you. I'm pretty sure I had my first ever prom corsage on my altar. I also had a, a, a piggy bank, so I was doing money magic from a young age, apparently. <laughs> you can also create your room into a sacred space. Do the same thing, take a bowl of water, bless it, say your intentions over it, write a sigil on the door, and keep your room clean, keep your room feeling good, that way your entire room is kind of a protected sacred space. Protected spaces are more important than a specific set altar in which you do workings, especially when you're not out in the open. Just recognizing that you have a space to be yourself, a space to research, a space to connect with yourself, with the universe, that is what's important. important. Third tip, herbs can be found in the kitchen. I don't know why I wrote it that way, but <laughs> if you're interested in like, oh, I can't go out and buy a bunch of herbs, they're probably in your kitchen. They're, you can find something for a spell in your kitchen if you really want to do a spell. If you're not in an area in which you can be very flamboyant, can't do candle spells, satchel spells and hiding little bags are great. I also love sigils. My favorite form of magic that is so hidden, you just write it on a piece of paper, call it a day. Tuck it somewhere, put it by your door, put it under your pillow, put it in the four corners of your house in dirt. Sigils are so good for witches who are not out and open about their practice. Write it on your piece of, write it on a piece of paper and put it somewhere. Or burn it, you can burn it too. Number four, materials and herbs can be found outside. I think that this is the biggest thing, is that a lot of people will say, well, I can't go to a witch store and just buy a bunch of witchy stuff. I'm like, well, can you go outside and find sticks, rocks, herbs and plants that you identify with that you can work with as allies and can you bring them into your home or can you connect with them outside in a different space? That's really all you need. That's a great way for you to start your witchcraft journey is by connecting with the land you're on, acknowledging the fact that it's stolen land if you are on stolen land and being able to just work with it. As a sidebar to this, forming a relationship with the land itself is a great way to practice witchcraft or animism without having to bring anything inside. Go outside, go on a walk, sit in the yard, talk to the trees. Form a relationship with all of the plants in your space, all of the bugs and the birds. Connect yourself and form a relationship with the land. That shit's witchy. And then when you get to a certain point, all you need to do is take a sigil, go talk to your favorite tree or your guardian tree, say, hey, I need help protecting this or I need help doing this. Could you help me with this? Bury the sigil by the roots and if you have a good relationship, it'll work. Plant magic. Me. Another great way, plants, house plants. I have all my babies here, not all of them, but some of them. This is my philodendron mycan. What is that? There's mold. Uh, what the? 
the hell? Look at that. God, good thing I picked her up. I'm gonna have to take this baby upstairs. Anyways, there's more than my philodendron mic in, but this is my philodendron mic in. I do not yet have a working relationship with her. I just take care of her. No wonder I tried to, wanted to pick her up. Oh, God, I'll take care of that. This is my ivy plant. She's California ivy. Focus, God damn it. She's thriving. I did um, my run, double, run working with her. And so far, she's doing amazing. Boop, boop, boop. She usually hangs, but she's doing so well on the edge of my altar that I don't want to move her. This is my pothos. He's a enjoy pothos. Focus. Also thriving, doing great, enjoying a good time. Um, the roots are not yet coming out the bottom, so I haven't yet switched her. This is my aloe vera. I raised this one from when he was a little child. Same with my spider plant, who's upstairs. So this baby, love of my life, I do have a plant ward attached to my aloe vera, as you can see. Very healthy, doing well. I actually think he needs to be repotted soon. Just kidding. He's fine. Um, and I have one more plant. Whoop! It's my rose of Jericho. Another plant that I, there we go. This is my Rosa Jericho. This is another plant that I work with pretty actively. There's actually a quarter in here, <laughs> in her right now. And all of these plants, all these plants are just normal house plants. Same with my spider plant upstairs and my pitcher plant, who I'm trying to not kill. That philodendron mica needs something. Uh, maybe less water. What kills mold in soil? Let me know. Plants and having house plants is a great way for you to form a relationship, do some witchy workings without it being super suspicious. Because if you're just talking to your plant, you're just talking to your plant. It's not necessarily witchcraft. It's just kind of like, that bitch is talking to a plant. Um, you can also bury things in soil. Um, and do workings with them. Like Rose of Jericho, there are certain things like the money tree that are supposedly good for money. Also, non-physical resources. This would be like online books. Scribbit is a great place for that. As well as that, you can do your book of, sh book of shadows, excuse me, digitally. There are so many resources available online. Scribbit, um, different ways for you to research. There are you know, whole Discord servers that are very low cost that are completely about witchcraft. But things like Scribbit, Google Books, online resources for books and online capable like abilities to receive books exist. There are lots of different ways depending on your price range. So you don't have physical books lying around that say witchcraft in bold or like this bitch is a witch in bold. Doing your book of shadows in digital form, I would honestly say that the best thing you can do as a witch who's not out and open about your practice is research. Because all of that can take place on a computer and doesn't have to be anywhere in your space. There's no chance that he, anyone will look at you weird. And that is what I love. Thrifting and thrift stores. If you don't have a lot of money, go to a thrift store, buy a bell. If someone asks, asks you why you bought a bell, just say, mm, I like bells. I don't think, I see, I'm a really bad liar. I would never get away with any of this. My parents have known. They've known I was a witch for a long time. Thrifting in thrift stores is more along the terms of budget witchcraft. Same with going and getting candles from the dollar store. Tea light candles are very inconspicuous. Not many people will look or bat an eye at a little white tea candle sitting on your desk. They'll be like, meh, okay. Um, even like nicer, like Yankee candles. I hate Yankee candles though. I think they are a fire hazard. <laughs> but different candles that are like found in stores you can get. So depending on the scent of the candle, you can charm it for different things or write a sigil on the bottom for different purposes. Thrifting and thrift stores are amazing. You can get so many cool witchy items there that can be used in your practice if you are at a low budget point. Um, as well as those are complete online communities of witches who are here and want to learn with you or teach you and they all take place online and you just don't you just don't ever have to like be open about it in your real life. Lavender oat milk latte. Um, but if you have tips for those who don't feel out and open or ready to be out and open about their practice yet, let me know. Let us know in the comments um, because I'm not the only person with opinions or ideas. <laughs> There's a whole lot of you. I love all of you dearly. 
just let me know in the comments. But that's all I have for you guys today. Thank you so, so much for watching. I'm sorry if I was a little scatterbrained during this video. I had a very rough weekend. Um, so give me some good news in the comments. Tell me about an accomplishment recently, something that you're proud of, good world news, anything. I need it. <laughs> um, thank you. And yeah, if you want, you can leave a comment, like, subscribe, turn the bell on, but no pressure. Remember to drink water and have a very good rest of your day. Sabanadika.